Hey everybody, how you doing? This is about to be a really fun video. Catch up to speed. I bought a 450 Bushmaster with a 22 inch barrel so we could compare the muzzle velocities against a 16 inch barrel. The 22 inch barrel, I couldn't get the muzzle break off. Let me show you where we're at. So, yesterday's video, I couldn't get the muzzle break off again. The original video, the barrel was coming out because it was taking less force to unscrew the barrel from the action than to break this muzzle brake. Super, super, super tight muzzle brake. We're in yesterday's video. Uh, yeah, I was tightening it. I was turning it in the wrong way. Maybe I'm stressed out. Maybe I need more sleep. I don't know. It just took me 10 minutes to find this camera that I'm filming on and it was in my pocket. So maybe I'm just stressed out. Got too much going on. But if you're watching this video, that means I got the muzzle brake off. Otherwise, I'm just going to trash this footage. So here's where we're at. <clears throat> Super tight uh, vice jaws made for clamping barrels. Old school heavy duty vice. I can't tighten it anymore. That barrel is in there. Last night, I just had it spritzed with WD-40 a few times. Then I went and picked up some of this PB Blaster. I'm going to put PB Blaster in this bucket, you know, at least that deep. I'm going to put this in the bucket and then I'm going to leave it there to sit. So, can I get this childproof thing off? Probably not. Oh, there we go. Oh, it actually has a screw cap under here, too. I already shook it up on my way over here to the bench, so. I literally bought this for this, so I'm not too worried about wasting it. But how am I gonna pour it one-handed and not make a big mess? Here we go, don't make a mess. Oh, we're kind of making a mess. It'll be all right, just PB Blaster. I didn't even feel making the mess. You kind of gotta pour this stuff fast. Well, let's grab the rifle, see if that's enough in there. It ought to be. Well, I gotta undo the clamp. It's hard to do this one one handed. Need me a cameraman. Okay. Barrel's loose enough. Probably got plenty in there. Yep. That's well beyond the crease of the muzzle brake. I'm gonna go chill out, make myself a coffee, make myself a sandwich, probably but give it about 30 minutes. Then we're gonna come back. I'm gonna use a box wrench. Then we're Hopefully going to get the uh, break off. Then we're going to go put it on the chronograph and get some muzzle velocities between those two barrels. And like I said, if you're watching this, uh, hopefully that means we got the muzzle break off. So I'm going to take a break. Go lean this up in the corner somewhere. All right, so here we go. It's been sitting in that PB blaster bucket for an hour and a half. Let me get it back up on the vise and uh, see if it'll budge. All right, now you can see it's still all dripping wet. Tons of PB Blaster soaking on there. It actually kind of changed the color of the Cerakote or whatever. I think these Gowalds are Cerakoted. More of a brighter color. Crank on this as hard as I can. Again, this is a extremely tough vise with barrel grips made for gripping barrels so they don't slip. Now this time we got a, oh man, the table's moving. Okay, that's about all the boogie I'm going to be able to give that. So now, pulling down would be tightening it like I did in the last video, face palm. We need to be pulling up. So let me see how I can get the most leverage here. This is a three-quarter, uh box end here still spinning the whole barrel still spinning the whole barrel you can see because the whole stock is back here spinning see if i can do it where y'all can see it whole thing's moving now 
can I make this any tighter? Oh, apparently I can a smidge. Now, a little shock to it maybe. Wag it with a hammer. I think we just got it. I think we just got it. So, that's the ticket, y'all. An hour and a half worth of PB Blaster. Then using all my strength with this, kept spinning the entire thing. Uh, but it took a little bit of a shock. So I got it in there and then whack, whack. So if you have one of these Rugers that's Cerakoted and you can't get the muzzle brake off, hour and a half of PB Blaster, three quarter inch wrench, open end, whack it with a hammer. Now, I told you we would do the chronograph stuff in this video. So, man, I need more rags in here. I can wipe this down. So, let's go out to the range. Some 450 Bushmaster ammo. And we're going to chronograph 22-inch barrel versus 16-inch barrel 450 Bushmaster. See y'all out at the range. All right, here we go. I got my chronograph set up. This is my 450 Bushmaster Ruger American Ranch 16-inch barrel. Uh, I've got my can on here. Which one did I put on here? Uh, this is my Vanish 46 V2. So big bore can, Vanish 46 V2. You can see on the barrel of this 450 Bushmaster scuff marks from the vise that I had to put this one in to get this muzzle brake off. So, uh, yeah. It's not just the Go Wilds with that gold coat that gets the muzzle brake stuck. A lot of you guys were saying that. Oh, it's the Go Wilds kills that coat. This is a ranch. This muzzle brake was stuck too. But, the uh, ammo I'm using here, this is my go-to for 450 Bushmaster. Remington Premier AccuTip. They actually have a really cool... It's the same projectile as a 20 gauge slug AccuTip. Uh, but I've taken quite a few deer with 450 Bushmaster with this very one. Uh, if we get significant speed out of the longer barrel, I'll keep the longer barrel one and get rid of this one. If there's not much difference, I just keep the short barrel one. Uh, but here we go. I'm not going to get a ton of data, uh, but all parts is going to be good enough for me. Just send one into my berm here. Ninety-two fifty-nine. That's literally impossible. So we're gonna have to send some more. But because it's funny, let me show you my chronograph. Ain't no way it's nine thousand feet per second. Maybe I'm too close to the chronograph to back it up. Yeah, that's our reading there. Nine thousand two hundred and fifty-nine feet per second. Hopefully, uh, hopefully my chronograph is not broken because uh, this is a long time coming getting the muzzle brake off that long barrel one. Here we go. I shouldn't be too close to the chronograph, especially now. Nine eighty-eight. You have got to be kidding me. Got to be kidding me. Why in the world we have this epic buildup of getting the speeds of these barrels? I mean, I've been working on this video for months since I bought this long one just to measure it. And my chronograph don't want to read today. 988. What does the box say on this? It should be around 2000. Yeah, 2180 is the number we're looking for. 21, 2200. This is literally impossible. We had a super fast reading then a super slow reading. Let me reset this thing. Not to mention we're burning money on the ammo. Okay, I reset the chronograph. Are we even here? Let me move the chronograph just a little bit more. I might have, have to go see if I can find my other chronograph. This chronograph has those built-in lights. I just turned those on to see if it makes a difference. Come on. Somebody said he needs a different chronograph. 2110. Now that's a valid reading. 
2110. I'm going to show it to you. I don't have two cameras going because I want to be able to edit this on my phone. So I'm not doing picture in picture. That way I can spend more time with my family tonight. If I edit it on my computer, I'm going to be up late editing. So, 2110. That's legitimate reading for a 16-inch barrel. Let's send another one. See if we can get another reading out of this 16-inch barrel. And 2070. Let me type these into my phone so I don't forget. 2110, 2078. Then I'm going to send the next two out of the long barrel. And then we'll talk about the averages real quick. I'm going to steal this scope and put it on the long one if I keep it. This is a, uh, what brand is this? Leupold. I don't have very many Leupolds. Uh, 450 Bushmaster uh, scope. It has holdovers made for 450 Bushmaster that's going 2200 feet per second. So this scope is a little bit fast calibrated for the 16 inch barrel. Now... I spent all that time fooling getting the muzzle brake off specifically so I could put my can on it. Now, uh, this is a glorious moment, y'all. Glorious. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm not a dancer. We'll stop that. Now, watch this. Surely, it's threaded the same. Surely. Come on, Ruger. Now that can's burning my hand, though. I'm sure about that. Yes, the 450 Bushmasters are threaded the same. Long and short barrels. Whoa. Ask me how I know that cans get hot. There we go. Tight. Now, remember, the average of the other one's going to be about 22,090. We'll get the official average here in a second. Uh, yeah. Let's send this one downrange. No scope. <sighs> See what we get out of this. Did I show you guys the 2070? I don't think I did. I better show you. Somebody said, man, this guy needs a vacation. Yeah, I do. Too busy all the time. You take a week off and do some, go mow some grass or something. Twenty one fifty one. So, getting about a hundred and fifty feet per second. Let me show you twenty one fifty one. Twenty one fifty one feet per second. I am literally losing my mind. My phone that I just typed the numbers in, it's gone. I can't find it. Here it is. Uh, 21.51, just so I could give us the official average. Yeah. Let's send one more into the berm. See how much faster this longer barrel is. 2156. Let me show you that. 2156 feet per second. All right, now let me get these averages real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so this is really surprising. Really surprising. I was wrong when I was giving the estimate of 150 feet per second faster. So the average of the longer 22 inch barrel was 2,100 and 54 feet per second the average of the short barrel six inches shorter <clears throat> was 2094 the average of this one 2154 minus the average of that one 2094 is only 60 feet per second 60 feet per second man so Six inch longer barrel only gets you 60 feet per second more on a 450 Bushmaster. I don't know. That's like 10 feet per second for every inch of barrel. It doesn't seem worth it to me. If it was going to be over 100 feet per second, um, 
I was definitely going to go with this one. Now, that being said, that Leupold 450 Bushmaster scope, the reticle in it is calibrated for a speed much closer to this one. So, hmm. Let me know in the comments down below, would you rather have the 22-inch barrel for 60 feet per second more, or would you go with the ranch? A lot of people say, oh, the ranch, it's handy, and, you know, for hunting out of a blind, but if you're leaving it in your truck, that'd be about the only reason I could see. Uh, for hunting out of a blind, I think that's irrelevant, because at 100 yards away, that deer cannot tell if, if your barrel's six inches longer or not uh but hey that's what we figured out i'm probably gonna keep this one um uh, probably hadn't made up my mind let me know what you think i should do in the comments down below is it worth it to have 60 feet per second more out of a 450 bushmaster generally speaking i like speed speed equals more energy, more shock. But, hmm, I think the only saving thing on this is going to be that scope is closer to the speed that it's calibrated for. Otherwise, I probably would keep the 16-inch. But, hey, appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for more. We'll see you on the next one. Hoo -hoo. Load it up and get all the soon as you can. If you like flinging moon, let's play.